morning, everybody. I am so excited to be here today. What an incredible lineup uh, before me. What an incredible space, uh, an incredible opportunity to share and talk. Usually when I come out and ask about Bitly, if everyone uses it, I like to take a picture. I left my phone back there. Maybe I'll come back later and get one. Uh, but uh, I'm a simple guy. I like to build companies and tell stories. And I want to t t share with you today some of the things that I've learned, practical advice and practical things that I take uh, from the 20 years I've spent uh, building companies and telling stories. I need to tell the story in the context of one of my favorite stories. I'm the father of three. I have three boys, three wonderful boys, uh, and we read a lot. Readers are leaders in my house. And from a very early age I uh, of my boys, I found myself reading them this book. Ra raise your hand if you've ever heard or seen The Carrot Seed. Same, same author who did Harold and the Purple Crayon. Right? Very, very cool stuff. Uh, I find that, uh, that children's books uh, tend to have uh, some of the most um, direct and specific uh, guidance on how to live your life. Uh, and they deal with the same themes th the, as some of the most important fiction and nonfiction that we read that's uh, maybe on the New York Times bestseller list. But uh, I find that when I talk about startups and the things that I've learned, it helps to put it in context and helps put it in context that we all understand. And for me, it's about this boy. And if you haven't read this book, you should. It won't take you long. Uh, and I think you'll all, it's a very easy, it's a board book. It's about that big. Uh, but it's about a boy with a dream. And all this boy wants to do is plant a carrot seed. And it is really, really difficult for this kid, right? So imagine that that's his mom and dad and his brother, and they could be stand-ins for your uh, investors, your friends, uh, and your coworkers. And they're telling him how hard it is going to be. It's not going to work. This seed is not going to grow. It will not happen. They are telling him this and beating this into his head every single day. But that doesn't stop him, okay? So this boy wakes up every single day, pulls the weeds from the ground, and he sprinkles the ground with water. And he sprinkles the ground with water. It's hard work. And when I read this book the first time, I found myself uh, thinking, uh, relating to it and relating to the story about getting my ass out of bed every morning when some days I didn't want to, getting on the train uh, into New York City, getting on the subway in New York City, getting to the office, turning on the lights, firing up my laptop, pulling the weeds from the ground and sprinkling the ground with water. It's hard, hard work. So just a little bit more about me. Uh, I am, uh, I've spent the past 20 years building uh, companies, mostly in New York. Uh, all technology-based. Uh, I'm the son of entrepreneurs, and growing up, I always felt a little bit different, okay? Uh, my father always told me that it doesn't matter who signs your checks, you work for yourself, and as I was developing my career, I always had that mindset. What was I doing today to help build my business and to help build my career? And growing up, uh, that's kind of an uncommon uh, sensibility, I found. Uh, maybe not if you live in Silicon Valley, maybe not if you live in uh, some of the other high-tech markets, but growing up in a small town in Rhode Island in New England, I can guarantee you I was one of the only people who was thinking about a company I would start one day. Uh, and that was uh, different. Uh, I knew that I was going to work for myself. I knew that I, I knew enough about myself uh, that I wanted to be the boss. Found that out at an early age. I don't like people telling me what to do. I like to, I'd rather tell people what to do. It's a bit of a self-actualization moment. Uh, but I knew that what I wanted to do was help uh, build businesses, build companies, and be a leader. And that was something that has driven me and continues to drive me this day, to this day. I haven't met everybody in this room, met a handful, but I'm going to project a little bit onto you and tell me if I'm wrong. Actually, don't tell me if I'm wrong. Just nod your heads and say, I'm definitely right. Uh, you guys are a little bit different. You've self-selected to start companies. That is really hard. That is crazy. Most of us in company, who start companies are going to fail. We've all seen that math. We've all seen the stories. We may not think that it's going to be us, which, by the way, spoiler alert, that's a really good thing. Uh, I've done five companies. They haven't all worked. You think that the glass is half full. You're optimistic, right? We all believe. You also don't like anybody telling you what to do. You are self-selecting into careers and into how to spend your time in a way that you're in control of it. And that it doesn't matter who's signing your checks, whether your investors are putting money into your company, you're working for yourself. 
and you're building your career and you're going to make it happen. Uh, and just like me and just like that boy, you get up every morning and get to work. And that's really good because building a company is really, really hard. And I keep notes all the time. I've now gone paperless, which is thrilling and terrifying at the same time. Uh, but uh, there's a couple of key takeaways that I've found important to me that when every time I go back to start a new business or create a new line or talk to or advise other companies, there's things that I like to, to share. And these are practical things, I hope, that you can use to help build your business as well. So the first thing is to be first or best. Whoop. Bigger, faster, stronger. Okay, so this might seem really obvious, but it requires a mind shift. The mind shift is you have to understand your market, you have to understand your product and what you're building and how it serves that market, but then you can also change it a little bit, okay? You can define your market. You should take a piece of paper or paperless, two lines, and put yourself in the upper right and then define that market. Okay, I look at companies like uh, Dropbox. I look at companies like Box. Really, the same product, right? Uh, but one is the best for enterprise, and one is the best for everybody. Same exact product. They have defined their market, they've defined their positioning, and they go out with clear, concise, direct messaging saying, we are the first, or we are the best, and we are the only. And you have to figure out for each one of your products, each one of your services, and each one of your businesses, what are you first at? And if you're not first, what are you best at? And how do you fulfill on that for everybody? You should be asking yourself every day. It is incredibly easy to get distracted. We are all creative people. We are all thoughtful. We get a lot of ideas. The nature of this community is we talk to people, and nine times out of 10 over coffee, you can come up with another idea. But you have to stay focused on what you're first at or what you're best at, and you have to define that for yourself. And the creativity is you can create new markets and create new definitions and make that happen. The second thing that I'll say is that that I've learned is that you need to count everything, but not everything counts. What I mean by that is you have to be fluent in Excel or Google Sheets or whatever it is that you use. It's not a nice to have, you can be artistic, you can be artsy, you can be creative, but if you're not tracking every single metric in your business, you're going to fail. Because you will find yourself one day when you're waking up, when you're sprinkling the ground with water, pulling the weeds, that in a good case, something worked. Oh my God, this worked. But what was it? And what happened? What drove that behavior? What drove that number? I'm a huge fan of just charting stuff, charting the numbers and seeing where they moved and understanding the difference between driving metrics and resultant metrics. Driving metrics are how many phone calls you made, okay? Resultant metrics are the sales that come out of that. Understand the difference, right? Uh, if you want to grow revenue, you can either sell more or increase the price. You can either hire more salespeople to call more, or you can improve the product to improve the price. Understand the way that these things ladder up to your ultimate objectives and track it. If you don't measure it, you can't improve it. And you will try to figure out, hopefully, what's working so you can do more of it. But ignore the things that, is, that don't make sense and that aren't relevant. Understand the resultant metric that you're trying to drive. Is it uh, adoption? Is it, is it signups? Is it email addresses? Is it uh, beer sold? Is it pizzas ordered? Whatever it is, understand what that core metric is and all the activities that line up underneath that to make it happen and measure it and look at it, become fluent in it. I'll, I'll guarantee you, uh, for those of you who have raised money, are raising money, or are going to raise money, one of the things that I know uh, uh, venture folks look for every single time is somebody who's got their arms around the business. This is what's working. This is how I'm going to make it happen. I have my hands on the wheel, and I'm going to drive the metrics that matter. Oh, awesome animation. OK, number three, align with your customers. Uh, so I've spent most of my time doing B2B uh, with a sprinkle of consumer product in there. Um, oh, back, sorry. Well, I'll get back to that, and I'll come to make money while you sleep. Uh, there we go, align with your customers. So what this means is you have to understand that anytime you're doing something, even if you are just so passionate about it, this is the best clicker in the world, and everybody in here should buy this clicker because I know it's better than every other clicker that possibly could be bought, and there's 10 of them, and trust me, this is the best because I'm the one who's waking up every day thinking about it. 
but what I'm not talking about and what I'm not thinking about is what's in it for you. Why would you buy this clicker? This clicker is the best clicker in the world because it's smaller, it saves you time, it saves you money, uh, and it's really very cool looking and everyone's gonna think I'm cooler because I'm using this clicker. You have to put yourself in the mindset of your customers and understand what they're gonna do with your product, what they're gonna do with your service, and what's in it for them. The other thing that I will say is to look at how you can price your product. And again, I've done, tended to do B2B products, but those products, have been, if you can set your pricing on a success-based pricing, I want to get paid when my customers have success. If you can start a business today, wouldn't you rather have a business where the more people use you, the more money you make, and the more you improve your product, the more money that they're going to spend with you? Because you will be perfectly aligned with your customers. You will not be hiding behind inflated pricing. You will not wake up every day afraid that it's going to go away. You will not uh, be worried about, if I invest a dollar here, will I get it back on the other side? Google AdWords, they did not invent cost per click uh, advertising, but they certainly took it to the masses. They only get paid when someone actually does something, and the advertiser and the, and the customer has success. So all Google does, among other things, is try to make it work better and better and better and better for their advertisers. And if they're focused on that, their advertisers are going to be happy and they're going to spend more money. To me, that's about standing right next to your customer and understanding what's in it for them and trying to build success alongside of them. Partnerships drive businesses. Sales don't. You know what's coming because I already showed it. Make money while you sleep, okay? Uh, I've learned this the hard way. We work way too hard. You work way too hard. And we're proud of it. I am up all the time, I'm on email, I'm connected, I'm always there, oh, I can't come to dinner, I can't put my phone down, I'm, I'm working, I'm doing deals, I got my team back in the office working, I'm so cool and so awesome because I'm working 23 hours a day. You're working too hard, okay? I'm guilty of this. But the best businesses are ones that scale your time and energy and the time and energy of the resources that you're putting against this, okay? There's lots of ways to look at this. I look at it practically in terms of subscriptions. Okay, so uh, I haven't talked about Bitly and I'm not going to talk a lot about Bitly today, uh, but one of the biggest things that I love about the Bitly business is for our brands and marketers, our enterprise clients, they, play, they, they buy subscriptions to software that is a year long or two years long and auto renews. Okay, so I, we have to sell them once and then we go back to making it awesome for them and making it work and adding features and adding value to drive their business and to help them be successful. I don't have to worry about selling it again the next day. I don't have to worry about replacing that sale to grow and adding on top of it. Thinking about uh, some of the great advertising businesses, again, Google AdWords is a great example. They hook up to billions of dollars worth of uh, budget that sits in agency pockets waiting to get spent. And they set budgets against it and let it run. As you think about the businesses you're going to build, think about where the dollars are. Think about where they're sitting. Whose pocket are they in? And how hard are you going to have to pull it out to get, pull that money out of their pocket. Um, you gotta think about how, like if you have the choice, and you do, think about how to set it up so it scales, so that you can wake up every morning, look at your report, because you're tracking it, and see how much money you made as a business the day before or the night before while you're sleeping. Ask yourself that question, don't work so hard. Which leads me to probably one of the more personal lessons that I ever learned, is that be a leader not a boss. If you're starting a company, nobody wants to work for a boss. They want to work for a leader. They want to follow. They want to be part of something that's bigger than them. So I found myself uh, as a first-time CEO uh, living in New Jersey, working in Brooklyn, taking that train into New York, crossing one river, going all the way downtown, crossing another river, and getting to Brooklyn uh, to uh, help run this company of 20 people, um, mostly all technologists. And as a I won't say young, but as a first-time CEO, I thought to myself, after 15 years of doing this, I am going to show them how it's done. I am the hardest working mother effer in the world. I am going to be the first one in the office. I am going to, through the sheer will of my determination, I'm going to show them and lead this company to where it needs to be. I had an hour and a half commute each way. I was the first one in the office every day, most days. I was the last one to leave. At the time, I had two kids. Didn't see them that much. And I did this for about uh, eight or nine months. And I found myself hiring a team of people whom I love, but that were 
as interested in hearing what I told them to do as they were about doing what they thought was right. And I found myself one day and I woke up in my house and it was almost physically impossible to get out of bed, right? The physical, the emotional, the everything that you read about in startups and being a, uh, the head of a startup is very true. And I thought to myself, oh shit, I can't do this anymore. And it was then that I realized I needed to build a team of people who were better than me, smarter than me, harder working than I was and am, and change my job from being a boss to being a leader. How do I get the people in the seats that are gonna drive this business, make great decisions, and my job should be about supporting them, clearing obstacles for them, and helping them be successful? Because only if your team is successful will your company be successful. And there's no way that any one of you or any one of us can do this by ourselves. And that's a very, very key learning. And if you, don't know, if you haven't learned that yet, please take my advice because it's no fun when you find out the hard way. So which brings us back to this boy, okay? Please, you can, uh, you can find the book, it's easy, it's $6 on Amazon. Uh, but every day this boy got up, he traveled across, <laughs> he took New Jersey Transit to Penn Station, got on the A, C, or E, changed, got on the F train to Brooklyn, uh, and planted that, seed, planted that seed, and every day his mom, dad, brother, his brother's the biggest asshole in this whole book, by the way, I don't know, <laughs> big, big brothers, big brothers are, uh, I'm a younger brother, my brother's great now. Um, but whoo, big brother is a jerk. Uh, tell him it's not gonna happen, you're nuts. But this kid, every day, he sprinkled the ground with water and pulled the weeds out. And then one day, God, I love this book, I get the chills every time I get to this page, I really do. Because the, the, what it says is, and then one day, it came up. Just like the little boy knew that it would. And it's those last two pages which are ultimately the most important lesson I can give, uh, I can share uh, with you all is that, okay, I don't have any Guinness Books of World Records, I haven't punched sharks, I haven't, I'm not friends with Elon Musk, um, I haven't built and changed cities, like incredible things, but I can tell you that if you don't believe in what you're doing and you can take the input from people, but if you don't believe in it and keep pushing at it, it will never happen. It will never happen unless you believe in it and you keep doing all the hard work. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate the time and the opportunity. Okay.